Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the fifth day of October 2022. I hope you're all safe and healthy today and that your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food and shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are trying to save lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks and highways and parks clean. Blessings also upon those that make deliveries such as food and water for our convenience and survival. Double blessings on the many women trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover the teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography. The victims also of prostitution and child prostitution. The victims also of human trafficking and sex slavery. And double curses on those perpetrators, those perverts, and those profiteers who are out here trafficking in human misery in every state and every county of the United States. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children without roofs over their head today, and millions more around the world in similar or worse conditions, and blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night at Madison Square Garden. The New York Knicks played the Detroit Pistons in the first preseason game of the season. So it's preseason. So what are you looking for in preseason? Obviously, it's not the season yet which means that the teams are not competing for real in terms of wins and losses, standings, playoffs, so on and so forth. But what you're doing with the preseason, you're seeing what you have with your squad. You're getting your squad ready. You're getting your squad ready and prepared and sharpened for the season. There are some players that are trying to make an impact, trying to affect rotations. There are others that are making the next leap. But altogether, you're trying to get your entire unit situated in terms of your rotation, in terms of how sharp they are, in terms of offense and defense, so on and so forth. And so that's what preseason's about. And oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes preseason can get, be a harbinger or a, a precursor to what you might look like during the season. So last night, Overall, when the Knicks played the Detroit Pistons, we must understand the Detroit Pistons are a young team. Okay, they're, they're going to be lottery bound again. And what they're doing, those the, the, the Pistons, as they should, is they're building around Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. So that those are their two main guys. They're developing those. And then you have sub players or players that are also building around them key pieces like a Sadiq Bey that's coming around them. Perhaps Isaiah Stewart. But basically after Cunningham and after Ivy and after probably Sadiq Bey, you're probably at that point just trying to build those guys up and then see what you can get around them. Okay, and that's where they are right now. And in that process, it takes two or three seasons. It's rebuild. And, you know, whoever's there is there, whoever's not is not. But those are the three guys you're going to build around. And you're going to see what pieces you can get eventually to complement them as they grow. Um, you know, you're expecting a Kay Cunningham and a Jaden Ivey have superstar potential. And then, of course, the Deep Bay is a very solid wing. Um, that you, you will need if you want to compete later on. They're all young. They're all under 24, 23, 24 years old. And so <clears throat> that's what you're doing. So they're going to be, I don't want to call them a bad team because they're not a bad team. They're just young. Okay. And they're, and they're developing. And so they're going to have a bad record. Okay. And they're going to be in the lottery. So that's what we're dealing with, with them. So. Um, we weren't expecting them to blow the Knicks out or anything like that, but we were trying to see where the Knicks measure in terms of their own preparedness uh, by just competing against this young team. Now, on the Knicks side, they're a little further along. They're in year three of their rebuild. They have R.J. Barrett as the face of their franchise. They have a bunch of young pieces, and, you know, like people like uh, Mitchell Robinson, Obi Toppin, we know Emmanuel Quickly. You know, they have a bunch of young pieces around RJ and then they have some stronger veterans some some guys like a Julius Randle who has been an all-star they have you know Derrick Rose you know we know they have some strong veterans and of course Evan Fournier so and they're led now at the point by by a guy that's in his prime moving up is J and Jalen Brunson so they are far further along in their rebuild than Detroit and this is the difference in rebuilding team so now you're you're further along so you expect a little bit more what you're looking for from the Knicks in this scenario is how sharp are they 
What do their rotations look like? Who's going to crack the rotation that maybe didn't last year? Who has grown? Who's taking that next step? How do they perform as a unit? And 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 that's really what you're looking for is, is measurements, really, right at this point. When I say test, some people thought it meant like I don't know, like a playoff test. No, every it's a test in terms of where are you at this stage of camp? Where are you at this stage of the season before you have to meet Memphis on October 19th? And so the Knicks, of course, looked very good last night. Um, they as they should have against the Detroit team, but you know you expected that. But what the to me the most encouraging player last night was Julius Randle. No, I'm not going to say he was the best player on the floor or had the best stats, but I wasn't looking. See, in preseason, you're not necessarily focusing on the stats. Too many people like to focus on stats and make judgments. Stats tell you a lot, but they do not tell you everything. Okay? You have to actually see the game, see the players. Julius Randle, to me last night, was what he was two years ago. And that's that's a really good sign. If he can continue that, the Knicks are going to be really good. Um, there was there were a, a, a lot of things. I was watching him very closely, especially in the beginning, first half of the game. Um, and I was very impressed. And I'm going to tell you some points about him that made me so impressed with Julius Randle last night. Number one, and we, we had Knicks Nation here last night. We had, uh, wait, my, 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 my one, two, three, four, yeah. Wait, one, two, three, four, four or five brothers and a sister here last night. All Knicks Nation watching the game. And we had a really good time uh, last night. And then about the fourth quarter, we turned it off. And we just started talking because Knicks blowed them out already. It was over. And we weren't really going to see any more. But that, we had a really good time. Knicks Nation was here last night. And, you know, um, as you're in the Orlando area, I'd like, you know, we'd like to get together with Knicks Nation. But these people are people that I have met before. If I'm meeting you for the first time, I'm not bringing you to my house, right? But we can meet at a restaurant or something, get together, get to know each other a little bit before I invite you to my house. But all of these people I have met before and we had eaten together before, uh, and mostly at restaurants and stuff. So yeah, so we got together. It was really nice. Uh, my wife and I are really, for that reason, we're really enjoying Florida a lot. Um, but anyway, that we were watching the game together and I was watching Julius Randall. And like his stat line, 15 points, um, uh, six of 10 from the field, two of four from three, um, one of two from the line, you know, six boards. He, he only played, he played 18 and a half minutes. Um, but the biggest stat line for Julius Randle in 18 and a half minutes, zero turnovers. He had zero turnovers last night. What I loved is he was getting the ball. Brunson, and it was Brunson mostly. But we got, you also had Barrett and Fournier. They were getting him the basketball in one-on-one -on -one situations. In other words, he didn't have to attack double teams because he wasn't the focal point. You see what I'm, this is what I mean when I say he's a second or third option. Last night, he was getting the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations or he was getting shots in rhythm. And that's when he's his most dangerous on the offensive side. On the defensive side of the basketball, he was rotating. See, those are little things I watch. I want to see him be on one side, rotate to the other side to help out a teammate that got beat or to make up this, you know, on that and then get back. He was doing that. He was doing that. And then last night, one of the brothers pointed out a most important thing that I had not noticed until he pointed it out. He never argued with the ref. Okay, there was one call he was not happy about, and he turned to the ref and said, good call. That's a different Julius Randle. If we can keep that one, top six. If we can keep that one, top six in the East. Okay, and, and those are, they're little subtle things, but if you can keep him in that type of mode, and what also... He was getting the basketball and within one or two dribbles, making the decision, either pass it or go, go for the basket. I have not seen him do that except two years ago. And I'm talking about all the way back to his Laker days, all the way back to his Lakers. When he got drafted by the Lakers, then he, the Lakers gave up on him and he went to New Orleans and then he came to the Knicks. I had only one other time. That was the season we went 41 and 31 that he was playing like this. And that season, it also started in the preseason. You could see it in the preseason. Okay. And I'm seeing it again. 
This is a very good sign for the Knicks. To me, last night, in terms of the future, long-term, sustainable winning, in terms of how this year is going to go, that's really good. And it's going to, if he continues to do that, the Knicks will have options at the trade deadline because he will be valuable and you will get a number one pick for him or you can keep him. It's up to the Knicks. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm going to tell you this, what I saw last night. The Julius Randle I saw last night, making quick decisions, not dribbling the ball at the floor and trying to set up the offense, getting moving without the ball and getting the basketball in situation where he's one-on-one with a weak defender. And then... As he was running, he was getting into the flow. And y'all have seen it. There have been nights when he gets into the flow and he got his rhythm and he started dropping baskets, man. He was he was hitting baskets. Now, one time he almost turned it over, but it I ain't, you know, I was a little nervous, but I was very happy with what I saw from him last night. Very happy. And like I said, this is only the second time in all the years I've seen him that he really started off a season like this. Um, so I was very impressed with him, very um, excited about the season, if he can continue to do that. Jalen Brunson made all the difference. And I'm not talking, again, we're not dealing with stats. Brunson has 16.7 of 9. He shot the ball very well, 2 of 4 from 3, um, 5 assists. But the assists don't tell the story. He was the general on the floor last night. And that's what helped, as we thought, that's what helped Julius Randle. He was the floor general. He was setting up the offense. The shots we were getting, the Knicks, um, you know, generally speaking, uh, the early part of a season, particularly with a defensive oriented team, I mentioned Tom Thibodeau, mentioned like an Eric Spolstra, with your defensive oriented coaches, your offense takes time to catch up to the defense. The defense is first. And so they'll start off playing good defense. But the offense takes time to catch up. So you'll get a lot of, you know, pretty bad shooting at first until the offense catches up and then you'll get, it'll be better. What I liked about last night, even though like they shot what they shoot, they shot 51% from the field. They shot 38% from three. Um, you know, what I liked about last night though is the reason they shot 51% was because they were getting good shots. That's it. Brunson was getting himself good shots, and because of it, he opened up space for Randall and Barrett, and they were getting good shots. They weren't getting bad shots, forced shots, very good shots, and that's what I love about Julius last night. He did not force one shot. He did not force one shot. What shots he took was in the flow. Man, if he can continue to do that, (laughs) oh, man. And then RJ, of course, RJ was very efficient. See, last year he averaged 20 a game. We know that it was 14 a game, then 17 a game, then 20. And what we were saying, or a lot of us were saying, is he, if he can get more efficient and get better from the line, he'll be a 22, 24 point scorer. Last night, he was two of two from the line, three of five from three, eight of 14 from the field, five boards, 21 points, extremely efficient. And it didn't even look like he was having a great game. It didn't. And when we would look up and I said, I told one of my brothers, I said, RJ got 21. They said, RJ got 21. Wait, that's the quiet 21. And he only played 22 and a half minutes and got 21 points. Very efficient. Very, very efficient. If we can get RJ like that all season. And again, it's not the numbers. It's the efficiency. Okay. Um, Fournier was like, okay, Fournier is what we would expect if you want to be real about it. Okay. So Fournier um, is a street shooter. So last night he only had five points. I wasn't, I'm not worried about Fournier's five points, to be quite honest with you, with, with the rest of this crew that they got out there. If it was somebody we're depending on, I'll be concerned. But, but my concern was defense. He got beat several times, uh, on rotations. A couple of times he was in a good spot and made, made good defensive plays, but, um, he got beat too often last night. Um, on rotations. He, he really is. He's just foot slow, man. He really is. And, and it didn't hurt the Knicks as much because they were playing Detroit and because of the rest of the crew that's around. Brunson, as I told you, he's a scrappy defender. People were making a big deal because he's 6'1". And yeah, there was a couple of times where people just shot over him because he's too short. I mean, you know, he wasn't short and tall enough. Like Kay Cunningham just shot right over him. But that's not going to happen all night. And Brunson's a scrapper. 
and he and he and he's gonna show that all season long. And he's tough, you know. I, I like that. Now, um, Cam sprained his ankle. Now I'm, I told y'all this before. If he gets hurt, he lost me. He got the talent, but he got to perform. He was one of six last night, three points. Um, he was forcing, he was forcing a little bit. He was pressing because he feels the pressure to, to perform, but he sprained his ankle. He better, uh, you know what? Look, he better be ready to play Friday. That's all I'm going to say. He better be ready to play Friday. Okay. I, this, this is put up or shut up time, brethren, for Cam Reddish. This is his fourth season. It's put up or shut up time. Okay. And he, last night he played 10 and a half minutes. He sprained his ankle. You know, he, he, he looked pretty good, you know, smooth, but he looked a little disjointed. Defensively, he was good. You know, defensively, he was good, but the ankle sprain is going to mess him up. See, he's not in Quentin Grimes position. Quentin Grimes got more favor than Cam does. He was drafted by the Knicks. The Knicks are hoping on him. They're going to take better care of him than they are Cam. Cam has got to show out. He can't, this can't be, you know, if he gets another chance. No, he got a ball out right now. Right now. Okay. And so, um, or he's just going to be like, you know, a dude that they signed to a contract that's somewhere around a mid-level exception. He's not going to get no hundred million. No, he's got to ball out. Okay. Um, and so last night was an opportunity for him and he did not pull it out that well. He just didn't. He, he played good defensive basketball, ran the floor well. In the open floor, he was good. Um, and again, defensively is the most important thing. But, but he's a little different. I need him to dominate. I need him to show his talent and to dominate. And that, that didn't happen last night. So I'm a little disappointed in Cam. Obi, uh, was Obi. You know, energy. Um, you know, his shot was off, but that's Obi. He gonna, he's gonna, his shot's gonna come around. I'm not worried about the shot right now with him. 0 for 4 from 3, um, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 points, you know, running the floor. Uh, you know, he, it was, Obi was good, man. Obi played 22 minutes. Um, and I like that Julius played 18, Obi 22. Now you're not, you're not gonna see that all the time. Julius is going to definitely be getting 30 minutes. And that's why, like, last night's stats weren't that important. He only get, he did 18 minutes. But Obi is going to be good. He is. And so it's just a matter of time. And he's he's going to really uh, show himself. Isaiah Hartenstein played 27 minutes. He was very impressive. The most impressive thing about him was the things we kind of knew. The passing. Okay. He, he did hit a couple of threes, which, you know, he'll stretch the floor. Um, but what I liked about him the most is those three things, the passing, the three point shooting and the hustle. You know, it's not like he's a dominant rebounder type dude, like Rich Rob on offensive glad, but he does hustle for on every play and he's going to be good for us. The mob deep is, is going to be something else, man. Now, um, Mitch Rob was Mitch Rob, three, three defensive rim protection on an elite level. Uh, again, um, what did he have? He had, uh, he had three blocks. Um, and, and a couple of, two of those blocks was Fournier getting beat <laughs> and him being there. Okay. And, and so, um, you know, he had, what did he have? What he had two personal fouls. He played almost 18 minutes. Um, yeah. Mitch Rob is going to be Mitch Rob. He anchored the defense. Uh, offensively, <clears throat> he only had six points. He wasn't as aggressive offensively, but I will say, uh, there were three times down the floor where he had his man sealed and did not get the basketball. Um, one time he did get it, but it was three seconds because they got it to him too late. But again, that's offense. I don't think that's a function of them not looking for him. I think that's a function of, of Jalen Brunson getting used to finding him where he, where he's going to be. Um, so I'm not worried about that. It's going to be okay going forward. <clears throat> it's just going to take time. This is, that's, this is where first preseason game, you know what I'm saying? So he, he had his man sealed. He was looking for the basketball and he didn't get it or he got it too late. We're going to be all right. I'm not worried about that too much. Um, Derek Rose only played five and a half minutes. Tib said after the game that was by design because he wanted to get Deuce McBride more minutes. Okay. And, and D, D Rose, you know, I, I mean, it, it was really just not even getting his toe in the, in the, in the, in the pool, you know what I'm saying? Five and a half minutes. Um, but, you know, he played a little bit and, and, um, 
he wasn't really a factor last night. But like I said, I think it was just him getting a little, a little sweat, a little wind up and down the floor a little bit. Deuce and Emmanuel quickly played most of the minutes uh, behind, behind Brunson. Uh, IQ was 5 of 11, 1 of 4 from 3, 2 of 4 from the line, which is not good for him. He had 13 points, a um, couple of possessions. Now, quickly, I'm not trying to, I know some people really uh, get emotional when I talk about quickly in a negative way, but he, he holds the ball too long, man. A couple of times he pounds the air out the ball until there's just a few seconds left on the clock, and then they're trying to scramble to get a shot. Tiz was yelling last night. He was yelling when he was saying, and I heard him, he was saying, move the ball. And he was talking to Dukes. Move, I mean, to IQ. Move the ball. Move the ball. Okay. And so um, this is going to be interesting to see how this is handled going forward. Because Emmanuel quickly has been doing this for three years now. Now, sometimes it works well, sometimes not so well. When he's playing in the backcourt with Deuce McBride, he needs to make that ball move. Deuce is not going to force anything. And Deuce doesn't force anything. Quick will. But he'll, but the thing is, it's not, and that's not the big issue. The big issue is you're pounding the basketball while the clock is moving and the ball, everybody's stagnant. See? So he's got to move the ball a little bit more. Um, Deuce, y'all know I love Deuce. Six steals last night. Um, three of seven from the field. Oh, of three from three. One of two from the line. Seven points. Six steals. Four rebounds. I mean, what did he have? Four, you know, he had four rebounds. Yep, he had four rebounds. He had, Two assists, four rebounds, six steals. Defensive demon. Marcus Smart 2.0. Except Deuce really does have a shot. He just needs more time holding the ball. He needs to run the point without somebody ball hogging. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, and he'll you'll see more from him. But stellar performance from Deuce McBride in the 22 and a half minutes that he played. Um, you know, and, and he can play better. Uh, I'm not worried about that. It just, to me, last night, the, the six steals, I'm not surprised by that because, to me, like I said, he's the best defender on the team. I know Grimes is a high-level defender, but I think Deuce is even better on defense. They, they're both really good, though. You And that's why Tibbs mentioned playing them together. I would love to see that. I want to see Deuce play alongside Quentin Grimes. That would be a defensive backcourt that won't give up anything offensively. Okay? So, um, that that's... Uh, that's going to be that's going to be amazing to see. Uh, so Grimes didn't play last night. Sims didn't play last night. Um, the way it looks, Mitchell Robinson's in really good shape. Um, he's not going to play eighty two games. None of these guys are going to play eighty two games. Um, but I think Mitch Rob will probably play another seventy seventy two games, sixty eight seventy two somewhere like that. And so you're going to get Hartenstein with some starters minutes, you know, for about 10, 12 games, and then you'll get. Jericho Sims getting some backup men. So they're going to need all those guys. Um, if Fournier doesn't in, improve on the defensive end, and I'm saying I don't see how he's going to do it. He's a 10-year vet. There's going to be nights. I'm going to tell you, he could drop 40 on you, but he's not going to defend at a high level. He's going to play the passing lanes well in Tibbs' scheme because Evan Fournier is a high IQ player. But he's going to get beat on rotations by every team in the league. Going to have somebody that's going to just leave him flat footed. Okay, um, Grimes will end. I still believe Grimes will end up starting at the two spot because of that, because of the defensive end. Okay, uh, I would love to see Cam start at the three, but if Cam doesn't show out in the preseason, that's not going to happen. Okay, that's just the real. It's not going to happen. He'll back up RJ, and as a backup to RJ, I think he'll be good. OK, I, he has the talent. He has all star talent, but talent doesn't translate until you make it translate. Right. So if he's injury prone, what's the talent, you know, going to do for him or for us as Knicks? Right. So we're going to see what happens. They got a game against Indiana on Friday. Let's see how Cam bounces back. If he can, you know, because last night he got he, he took six shots, he, you know, so he didn't get a lot of shots either. But. Let's see if we can get in the flow and get and get a rhythm and see if we can get him going uh, Friday. That's what I would do. If I, if I was Tibbs, that's what I'd play him the same. I'd, I'd try to give him like, you know, 20 minutes on Friday if his ankle is good and then see if we can get him in the flow. If his ankle is too sore to play Friday, I'm telling y'all, it's a wrap. You know, he's, it's, it's a wrap at that point. You can't have it this year. It can't be no, you know, this, this dude's got to play. Forget the injuries. He's got to play this year. 
So if he doesn't, it's going to be a wrap. He's not going to be able to, to crack the rotation like that. It's going to be Grimes, okay? And, and Evan Fournier, that's what's going to happen. So um, let's see. Uh, we, it's, like I said, it's early in the preseason. Let's see what happens. They're going to play Indiana on Friday. Um, let's see what happens. But overall, I like where they are right now. The, the players, the new players, which is really your, your Jalen Brunson, your Isaiah Hartenstein, they seem to be seamlessly fitting into Tibbs' system. Um, the players that have been with Tibbs are now all moving another step in understanding what he's looking for. And, and that was really good to see. Um, so uh, overall, I'm, um, I'm happy where we, where the Knicks are right now. They still need to continue to use this preseason to, to develop a little sharpness. Uh, but I'm happy where they are right now. Let's just continue to do it. Let's hope nobody else gets hurt, you know, and I like how Tibbs is resting people in practice in the camp, not, not pushing them. So last night, you know, Jericho Sims sat, um, I would, Grimes said, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he sits Evan Fournier on Friday, depending, um, you know, and, and if Grimes is ready and let's, let's see what happens with Grimes starting, especially if Grimes is ready to play Friday, I really want to see him and Deuce play together because I think that's going to be a dynamic duo right there. But Deuce looked really ready to play last night in the game, knowing what he had to do under control, defensive stalwart. You know, a, st a, a, a stopper, a defensive stopper, you know, um, yeah, don't make a mistake of putting the ball in front of him too quick because he's going to strip you. So <laughs> it was all good last night. But, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with what we saw um, where they at right now. Let's continue to, um, to see that progress moving forward. The defense looked really good overall. Tibbs has them playing Tibbs defense. And that looked really good. Um, I, I don't know how many turnovers did they force last night. They they committed 13. How much did they force? They forced 21. Yeah, they forced 21 turnovers. What you kind of expect against a young team like Detroit? Um, you know, but again, you got to play who's in front of you and you got to start somewhere. It's a good start for the Knicks with that. You know, they forced 21 turnovers. Um, they got to continue to do that to continue to, to get better. And they will. Uh, and as Tib said last night, there's still a lot of work to do. And there is, but I'm very encouraged, especially, like I said, with Julius. If he continues to have that mindset and to play like he did last night under control and let Brunson and RJ and everyone else run the offense and let him just move without the ball, the Knicks are going to be in very good shape. Very good shape. Okay. Very good shape. So um, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. And today is Wednesday. We'll be back on, um, well, I will not see the game Friday, but I'm going to see the replay of the game over the weekend. And then we're going to talk about that over the weekend. Uh, any other news comes up, you'll hear from me. But anyway, and, until then, be safe out there. Shalom.